Hello. So earlier this week, I created a video with details regarding my journey to understand attention from the Google paper, Attention is All You Need. And I was very happy with the discussion in that video, but I wanted to make a quick follow-up video uh, for two reasons. Uh, first, because the code in that video is hard to see because it's, it's pretty small on the screen. And also because I applied that model to a sine wave uh, forecasting problem, which is incredibly easy and not of a lot of practical use. So I've been stress testing this attention-based regression model on more complex data, and I just wanted to show off uh, some of those results as well. And so to quickly review the, uh, the model used in the previous video, uh, I had created this attention class, um, attention PyTorch class, where I used linear neural network layers for the queries, keys, and values weights, weight matrices for the attention mechanism. And this was possible because we we're looking to perform regression on sequence data and not an embedded text matrix, uh, as is often done with transformer models. And so uh, what this does is the forward pass of this class implements the attention equation and it uses a, uh, a lower triangular mask uh, to mask the data. Um, and so that is, that is the, the attention class that uh, processes the sequence data. But in order to perform regression, um, I created another class called forecasting model, uh, which is also a PyTorch class. And all this does is it, it takes uh, the attention output uh, from um, attention applied to our sequence data, and it passes that output through a standard feedforward neural network. And um, I use very basic architecture and uh, just uh, have ReLU activation between the hidden layers, and the final output is a single uh, linear value um, uh, regression output. And so the, uh, the first problem that I tried to apply this to was still a trig function, but a slightly more complex wave than a simple sine wave. And so what I did was I, I first uh, took this function sine minus cosine squared, and then I took its derivative uh, to create something uh, pretty uh, complex in, in nature. And so when I originally applied the attention regression model, uh, to this data. I used all of the same hyperparameters as the uh, sine wave case shown in the previous video. And um, I wanted to show off why that failed because I thought it was something that was that was pretty interesting. So uh, this was the, the output of that first run where I didn't do any hyperparameters tuning at all. And so the, in the blue, we can see our more complex function with noise applied. Um, it's still not all that, all that, um, all that complicated, but it does have uh, different amplitudes for different points in the uh, in the function. And so, what we have at the end here is the green line is the continued function, but the red line is our prediction, and we can see it's way off. And the reasoning uh, I believe for uh, why this failed was that my sequence length uh, hyperparameter. Uh, was far too small for this problem. And so with the sine wave, I used a sequence length of 200, and that picked up, that was able to pick up most of the behavior of the pattern. And so like the 200th time point is about here. Um, and so we only see this, this small window, and I think all the model was able to pick up is that there are curves of different amplitudes. And so when it went to predict off of our final real value, it just produced curves of different amplitudes. Um, and it kind of increased, or it kind of produced this increasing oscillation. But to remedy this, uh, I, I, um, I increased the data size of the problem so that there was more repetition in the pattern for the model to pick up on. Um, but then I, I greatly increased the sequence length. Um, so the model now looks at 1,600 time series data points. Um, and again, this is, this is maybe a little bit too easy, and that's why I also want to show off a real-world data problem with this applied to it. But, um, but it's a more complex pattern and a little more interesting than the simple sine wave. And so I did my naive hyperparameter tuning again. Um, in practice, you'd want to want to rigorously tune your hyperparameters, but I just uh, spitballed it and then um, 
tinkered with it a little bit um, as I reran the code, and the end result was uh, was is shown in this image, and so. I thought this was very interesting. I forecasted it out very far because I wanted to show off two things. Uh, the first is that with that increased sequence length, the model picks up on the pattern very, very well and predicts it almost exactly uh, for at least two periods of data. And so that I thought was really interesting. That gives me hope that uh, this simple attention regression network uh, might be of practical use in problems with sort of medium data size where uh, you have enough data that you don't have to use something too simple, but maybe not enough data to use a full large language model or something very complex. Um, but I also wanted to show off the fact that just like with any forecasting problem, the further you get from your last real data point, uh, the model starts to break down. And so even with this very seemingly well-trained model, um, as we get far, far enough from our, our last data point, the model, the model forecasts fall apart a little bit. And so... Uh, this was of, of a lot of interest to me. Another good point to make on why this is too easy and the sine wave problem is too easy is that even with noise applied to these data points, um, the model is still seeing the same basic pattern at training and at evaluation. And so that was another reason to try to um, try to have a real world forecasting problem. And so I'll show that problem now. Okay, and so, uh, so I found some real world data to apply this attention regression model to. And while I was searching for this data, I also came across something interesting that I'd like to highlight and that there's not a lot of real world data where this model is uh, complex enough to, to apply. Um, in fact, most time series forecasting models uh, are, are more useful on data sets with repetitive patterns um, and for something more complex you might want to analyze the time series in addition to several other things. So I'd foresee this attention regression um, component uh, being part of a larger model where you maybe have other data types that you want to look at in addition to the, uh, the time series data. But uh, I found this data set that, was, that I think this applies to uh, where we have a time series pattern and that's all the data we have and we want to forecast future values based on uh, previous values in the in the time series and so this is a recorded number of observed sunspots uh, at at a consistent time frequency I'm not sure what the time domain is um, and so I liked this data set because like our uh, contrived trig function examples it has this periodic nature to it um, but there's also there's a lot more noise in the data but also has some interesting patterns in that you know there's this hopping pattern in in the smaller window of, uh, of, of time but then there's also kind of this pattern to the amplitudes which may or may not be a real pattern or just a coincidence um, in the larger time scale. And so I thought this would be interesting to test out the model on. And I segmented it into the first 2000 data points in the data set being our training set. And um, then the last 200 some odd points being a, t a testing set to compare the, our forecast to. Um, and so I, I, uh, I did my um, very naive hyperparameter tuning where, where I messed around with the model until I got a good fit. And I found that going back to our sequence length of 200, as we did in the simple sine wave example, is sufficient here because the pattern occurs over such a short time frame. Um, but I, tr I trained this model and uh, I have the results of that training here. Um, this was also very interesting to me. Um, the predict the predictions coming out of the model are are pretty good, especially in terms of capturing the the frequency of this hopping pattern in the short term. Um, it does a pretty good job. But I also thought it was interesting that um, that possibly possibly fake uh, meta pattern of this of this uh, increasing decreasing max amplitude of, of given periods is also followed by the model. And so it picked up pretty well on this data, um, even though uh, this data is also pretty simple. The, the pattern is a lot more noisy and it's a lot more real world. And so 
I was very excited about this result as well. Um, and so these were just some additional examples that I applied the same model to. Uh, I plan on uh, continuing to look into uh, attention for sequence analysis and maybe even uh, transformer encoder for sequence analysis. And so I will maybe do that in future videos, but uh, for now I'm very happy with these results. And uh, I thank you for listening and um, hopefully I'll be back with more soon.